You pay a yearly uh, dues to the membership. You become a member of it. Um, and then there are meets where people get together regularly, whether they be local meets or uh, larger meets. Um, and like this one, this is basically a convention. So you would also then pay to get into the convention. And there's also meetings or information, other things you get with it that make it well worth the money. Uh, but then you get access to the tool sales. So I'm going to be taking you through this and showing you what all is in there today. I'm also down in the description of the video. If you're watching it on your a mobile device, you can click right beside the, the title. There's a little down arrow. You can see the description of the video there. And uh, in there, I have links to the Midwest Tool Collectors Association, um, as well as the map of meetings and places to buy tools all over the world. And so uh, it, people are always asking me, you know, there's, no, there's nothing near me like this. You'd be surprised. There actually probably is something like this near you. Um, go ahead and look on the map and see what all locations are around here. So let's actually dive into this and look at what we got going on. And woohoo, here is the fun time. So um, one of the things is they have these displays that talk about the history of tools. So um, different uh, different things have different things. Blacksmithing hand tools. This one is kind of cool. This is uh, um, plow planes, a, a really interesting collection where you can actually go through and see the different types, how they've changed over time. Um, tools for Model T Fords and other things like this. So each of these tables has a uh, has a has a, um, a theme and a something else about it. This one's kind of cool. An original Distin sign that they made, which is an actual replica of a handsaw uh, from Distin. That's kind of cool. But let's actually get into uh, the tool sale. This is what people really want to see. Oh, we also have demonstrations here. They have uh, um, the guy over here actually making locks, um, doing blacksmithing and filing locks. We have some timber framing, so you can actually come in here and play with slicks and uh, beam drills. And then we've got the the tool sale. So um, I'm just going to go through all these tables and let you guys take a look at what is actually here. Um, on Thursday, hey, from Texas. Um, on Thursday, this is all outside. And then Friday and Saturday, it comes inside. And all of these things are for sale. Two, ser two cherry chisels. Ooh, I like those. Um, but you always knurled nuts. You ever looking for one? There, there, uh, there's a bunch of fun things here. Ooh, Stanley Everlasting Chisels. A full set. I didn't see that first time I came through here. Uh, so these actually have, they're, they look like a socket chisel, but there's a tang that comes all the way through up into the steel button. There's a uh, leather ring underneath here. So when you're hitting this, you're actually hitting the same piece of steel all the way through. But kind of a cool design. Um, I don't use mine as much, uh, but a lot of people really like these chisels. Yeah, if there's anything you want to see or if I ran by something, let me know. I might be able to go back and take a look at it. Here's a bunch of, uh, well, some bedrocks. Early bedrocks, too. Nice ones. Ooh, dilly. And there's going to be a lot of people here we're going to be coming around and working with. I'm looking for a slick. Um, earlier I bought a, uh, a small router plane. I bought an unsquare. Uh, got a couple other things I'm looking at. There's a beam drill over there I'm looking at. One dollar each. Anything in there? Two dollars each. Screwdrivers, saws, braces. Stanley 45s. Let's see what we got over here. Now here's a, a Stanley 45, but this has a, uh, a hollow adapter, so you can actually do that with the, the 45s. Brazil, wow, nice to have you on here. Ah, uh, man, all these these toys. <laughs> 45s, a couple 55s, some transition planes. What's the coolest timber drill? I, that's the coolest timber drill I've seen. Oh. Carving tools. There are actually quite a few carving tools here this time. So you can go through 100 bucks for this roll. $100 for all those chisels. That's actually a really good price. I might come back through and... If there's one V-Tool in here, I'd claim this set. That's, yep, there you go, V-Tool. Um, I might be back to buy that. 85 bucks for that set. Another V-Tool in here. Oh, check this out. Stanley marking gauge. Is that one of Stanley? Yep, Stanley. Spoke shaves, other marking gauges. 
How much is the odd job? I don't know what you're referring to as the odd job. Levels. Ah, uh, I, I, I keep thinking about this one. If I have the money left over, I'm gonna probably buy this bevel. Nice long one, the screw on the back here. That's a really nice user bevel. Uh, might, might get that one. Chisels, ten dollars each. Huh? Let's see, these ones are ten dollars each. Ten dollars each. You ever looking for a chisel or a gouge? Oh, I like the shape on that one. That's kind of cool. Hatchets. Already dug through there. I almost bought another hatchet. Here's another uh, beam drill. Didn't see what he had on this one. There's one over there that I'm looking at. What is the Midwest Tool Collectors Association? Um, I have a, an entire video on what is the Midwest Tool Collectors Association, so I suggest you type that into YouTube and it will take you through what that is. But basically, it is a group of collectors that share information, and then every now and then they get together and they sell tools. Was beside the role of carving chisels. Let me go back and take a look. Odd job. Oh, here it is. I didn't see it. Nice. I ran right over it. That's kind of cool. I've never run into those before. <laughs> I'll have to come back and check that out. Let's see what we got. Oh, check out these ads. So they got the blade here. There's a spur that comes over to hold it onto the handle. He's got two of them there. A couple more router planes. Hollow round editions. Where is it? Uh, we are right now in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And I'm going to have to get around all these people over here. Have you seen bird chisels? Um, I don't know, but I haven't been looking for them. So I'll have to come back around here. Whenever you see a group of people, it usually means there's something good in there. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Some bedrocks, uh, old TV tubes, scrapers, some interesting things. Lots of books, good information, um, especially the collector's books, so you can actually see what's going on. Yeah, how is the uh, the video footage? I'm a, I was kind of afraid of this one being inside. I'd love to hear that. Some mallets, more mallets, dippers, axe. Here's some squares. Another unsquare. I was thinking about buying that one, but then I found one that was even bigger. Hey, from Denmark. Good to see you on here. Good. I tried to uh, clean it up a little bit so that the image would work a little bit better inside today. So I'm hoping it stays well. Let's keep on going. So we've we did one row, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows more to go. So we're. Uh, not one tenth of the way through. <laughs> oh, beautiful! Yeah, showing everyone what they're missing. Yeah, right. McMoy's MC Mays, Boston, Massachusetts. That is cool. 1875. That is beautiful. <laughs> this is what do you say? It's cheaper for us to live through you, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to one guy, he came here for his first time and ended up spending over $3,000 just yesterday. And he's got two more days of sales to go through. Oh, check this out. This is an old uh, miter trimmer. So you can pivot this all the way to 90 degrees or back and you can use either side of the blade. And this whole thing then slides in and out on that track. That is really sweet. One of these days I want to pick one of those up, but uh, haven't yet. Time will come, though. I'm new, too. Ah, um, they're actually new, but they got happy with the stamp. My wife's new, so. <laughs> Can you identify this wood? I'm guessing black locust. Have you, um, have you heard any on SKUA? I don't know what you're talking about, sorry. Anyone want uh, pencils? Someone selling off their collection. Have you gotten any chance 
to use the dovetail chisel set. Yeah, actually, uh, the video that just came out yesterday, I was showing using it. That was uh, a lot of fun to play with. I love that chisel. Now here's a uh, Stanley anniversary set. A lot of knives. There's a skew over there I was eyeing. We'll see about that one. Someone was telling me there was a skew, uh, excuse me, a slick here that uh, didn't have the handle, and I was looking at uh, working on it. Hey, check out this compass plane. Adjustable, so you can actually slide these blocks in and out to create a different curvature. That's absolutely gorgeous. Before they got into actual bendable steel. Have I seen any frame saws? Um, yeah, I think there was actually one frame saw over there. We'll have to go look. Bunch of molding planes. It is rather busy here today. So getting close pictures is going to be a little more fun. Let's see what we got over here. Ball peen hammers, blades. I'm going to come back here, here and see if I can find. I'm looking for a blade for a small uh, Stanley router plane. A little bit of everything. Massive files, rules. Check out that hacksaw. Have you bought anything? Yes. Yeah, I have a small router plane, an unsquare. Ooh, Stanley 55 for 90 bucks? Oh, I might come back for that one. Okay, check it out. $90, Stanley 55, four sets of boxes. That is a fantastic deal. $45 for the axe head, that's pretty good. Yeah, check out the wedge on this thing. I don't know if that is ivory or bone, as they say now, on the head, carved, make like a little head. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at that. I don't have to look at it. That is, and it's got all the extra doohickeys on it, too. That's dirty, needs a little bit of cleanup, but looks like it worked fine. Here's another swing arm. I bought one of these yesterday. No, don't don't worry about the questions. Go ahead and ask him. It just takes me a little bit more time to read it. Is it open tomorrow? Yes. Um, actually, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Saturday, you can buy a Saturday only pass. So you have to be a member, twenty-five dollars a year. Um, but the Saturday only pass, I think, is twenty-five dollars. Um, and so that's for, you know, the people who just can't come the rest of the day. Now, a lot of things have been picked through, but usually on Saturday you can get some good deals because people don't want to have to lug all this back out to their truck. Um, so, yes, there is a Saturday-only deal. I won't be here because I'm going to be leaving here this afternoon, but uh, it's definitely worth it. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, but a bit of a... Some interesting historical items. Ooh, basswood. My mom would be happy. Two dollars, three fifty, three fifty, seven bucks for the one on the bottom. Some really nice carving wood. I might actually come back and grab a slab of that. A bit and tap set. This sucker is just gorgeous. I love this infill. Whew. Beautiful, beautiful beast. Okay, 78. Two dollars each. One dollar each. Ah, check out the uh, Stanley Toolkit for the uh, the handyman. Some levels, books, catalogs. Let's see what we can get over here. Ooh, here's a nice one. Sorry. Carving chisels. 20 bucks each. Some really nice ones in there. Socket chisels. Let's see what the name on that is. Gorgeous. More carving chisels. There's a beautiful beast. 
yet. Uh, Infill shoulder plane, anyone? Let's see, who's the maker on this one? Spears! That's kind of cool. Stanley 55 cutters? Yeah, 160 bucks. <laughs> Half the price and you can get the whole real thing over there. Hey, 50 bucks on a hunting guide. Brand yeah, new, basically. Back here. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. Heard anything about Sky Took Oklahoma? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, they're not doing that again, from what I understand. You're taking over your local meetup. Yes, I am. Uh, the one just down the road from me is uh, is now. I'm co-hosting it with another guy. Oh well, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Levels. Decal tape measures. What's the what's the tool on top right of the hammer? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you're referring to this. This is a fence for a swing arm. Looks like a large steel drill guide. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I'm a little behind because it's about a minute behind on the uh, the response. Oh, steam whistle, yes. Big steam whistle back there, someone made. Couple old sets, uh, construction block sets. Another handyman tool set. Here we go, spoke shaves. Now there's an F-style clamp. You could trust that one. That's a beautiful beast. Big old augers. Anybody want a spoke shave? It's going to be a block plane. Some clamps. Now there was someone who had this massive, like uh, two foot long clamps. Let's see what we got over here. More chisels, each marked. Pattern maker chisels. 45. Yeah. And the more I think about it, the more I want to go back and snag that, uh, that 55 set. If it's there when I'm done, I'm taking it. It probably won't be, though. <laughs> yeah, these are... I think that these are mortising bits that would go in one of the, uh, the big foot-powered. I'm not sure. There are quite a few of these uh, scrub planes, but the price on those has gone up recently. A lot of people have been wanting them. Beautiful collectibles. Okay, let's see what we got over here. Lots of blades. Stick for number eight. Bits. Frogs and other plane parts. More egg beater drills. Oh, that's cool. I've been looking for a spill plane. So I'd like to find and make a couple spill planes, but I haven't gotten the chance yet, so. Some Stanleys, some bed racks. Some old stones. Tongue and groove planes. Fun, James. Stanley number twos. Yeah, actually, there are a couple Stanley number twos. There's actually, there's someone here who has like got ten Stanley number ones for sale. So yeah, there's a pile of them. Um, been looking for a good dovetail saw, but they seem so expensive. Yeah, uh, for a, a user dovetail saw, usually the cheapest way, the way I usually tell people to do it is uh, get a Veritas saw. Um, it's about the cheapest you're going to get for a decent dovetail saw, unless you want like a gent saw. Um, 
if, if, if you can't afford that, then a hacksaw is really a, actually a fairly good option. Uh, you can make some really nice dovetails with a hacksaw. So don't uh, don't overthink it and think about you having to get a really nice back saw uh, because those are expensive. So Veritas or a hacksaw is my usual say for if you just need a user. Another low angle, 62. Those are hard to find. So traditionally, they weren't very useful. Uh, they were from bircher blocks, and that was about it. And not too many people use them, whereas nowadays they're kind of the coveted thing for the beginner. A lot of levels, a lot of augers. Now here's another 55 with all the blades for 450 bucks. Oh, he sold the big ones. $12 for a pair, $17 for a pair. He had some that were like 24 inches longer, uh, 24 inch. He was selling for 20 bucks a pair. A couple bedrocks down there. Let's see what we got over here. Wind body sets, molding planes, hollows and rounds. Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. Beautiful patterns. Boxwood hags tooth. Looking for a used router plane. What's the price range within? Um, anywhere from uh, like the little one I bought was 20 bucks. Uh, but normal size usable, you could probably find one here for 40 bucks that needs a little bit of work. Uh, with everything else, you're probably going to be spending around 80 bucks. Oh, more stuff so usually the 40 to 80 for a router plane. There's probably about two dozen of them here today, so quite a few of them. Another Stanley 45 for sale. Some transitionals. Well, that's kind of a cool design with the handle offset. Here's some Winchester planes. Uh, for user's sake, actually Winchester is a, uh, a really good plane. Um, I like them. And they tend to be a little bit cheaper. Like this uh, four and a half, that's, uh, that one's a little on the more expensive price. But uh, yeah, if you have a hard time finding a router plane, you gotta come to one of the, uh, the tool meets. Become a member and uh, join up. They're, they're all over the place here. Um, but most of the time when I tell people they're having a hard time finding a router plane, make your own. Uh, they really only take a couple hours. And if you have an old half-inch chisel or something of that nature, you can make a router plane very quickly. Um, I have several videos on making them, uh, so definitely check that out. But they're really not that hard to make. Um, but buying them, yeah, they are a little bit harder to find, but you have to know where you're looking. But, uh, they are around. Actually, I, I used the poor man router's design for a while, and I, I kind of like it, but uh, for the amount of work that a regular router plane actually cost, takes to make... Uh, whoop! Oh no, I'm back! Apparently my wife was calling me. Uh, sorry about that, apparently my wife was calling me. Um, the uh, poor man router plane, um, I've used that quite a bit, and... Um, I, it, it is good, and anytime that anytime I'm telling someone, you know, if you just if you're a pinch, you need a router plane, go ahead and make one. Uh, the poor man router plane works really fast and quick. But if you have a couple hours on you, um, make an actual router plane. They're really not that hard to make, and it really only takes a couple hours. Uh, I have a couple videos in that, so um, yeah, making a router plane is, is a great option. I used one for probably about a year and a half until I found a Stanley, and they uh, they work really well. So let's keep going. Oh, here's the brass section. Look at all these chasing mallets. Some of these are really gorgeous. Greetings from Ukraine. Woohoo! Do you like Miller Falls planes? Yeah, Miller Falls is a great name. Check out this one. His hairdo looks like mine. <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous work. Man, these are beautiful. Let's see, here's another 55. $100, most all the parts, missing a few cutters, but comes to the box, missing a lid, but 100 bucks, that ain't a bad deal at all. Oh no, there's a lid. Wrenches, wrenches, wrenches. Okay, here we go. Back when plastic handles was actually a good thing. 
it's a good set. They all have the original uh, um, wax still on them. <laughs> oh, there's a gorgeous plane. Check out that. Yeah. Collector's piece for sure. <laughs> Measures, rules, wrenches, tapes. Check out the carving on the side of that thing. Oh, you bought it. <laughs> the dowel maker I was looking at earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Someone snagged it. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, actually, I'm going to be doing the whole thing about halfway through now. Um, but yeah, I'll be done in about 20 minutes or so. Now, this back here, this thing here is for um, checking grain. So they'd shove that down into the grain and they could check it at different depths. Kind of a cool old tool. Get yourself some good bevel edge chisels, mate. Um, I'm actually not a fan of bevel edge chisels. Um, I've used them quite a bit and I don't like them. But personal preference. I actually like them like this. This is my favorite side. And there's like a, a sixteenth of an edge flat on the side and then beveled here. That's what I like. That's the, the shape of chisel I'm comfortable with and I really enjoy. Uh, Lee Nielsen chisels. Apparently someone's playing with a microphone. You know, uh, so I was able to go through it like that. Veritas Narex chisels. Oh, check out that black beauty. No, there. Uh, well, there are. Um, this place you can't buy online, but there are a bunch of online sellers, um, and I have a uh, wiki page that actually lists them. There's probably. I think there's 20 or so online sellers that have a running list of things that they have in stock that they're selling online. Um, so I have a video recently came out about where to find hand tools, and on there I have a link to the site. Um, sorry, I don't have a link in the description right now. Um, I have a link in the description below for where to find hand tools, in other words, locations to buy hand tools, and you'd be surprised how close a lot of them are uh, to most people. Uh, but online, there are quite a few good online sites um, that you can buy them from. Yeah, tool sales all over the country. Um, I have a map in the description below. Go ahead and click on that, and you'll see the map of where you can buy hand tools all over the world. Um, there is one in Florida. There's actually a show similar to this coming up in Georgia in February, and that'd be well worth the drive. There are, there are a lot of people who literally drive from all over the United States to come here, and there are quite a few people here today from all over the world, um, because it's worth it. So definitely, it's worth the drive. Especially if Georgia, that's not that far. I'm still looking for a spill plane. I have to come back and look through these. Lots and lots of planes for sale. Come around. Transitionals. Some big beastie transitionals. I don't know of any in Iran, but. Display. Apple peeling apple display. Apple slicing and potato peeling display. <laughs> the demonstration. You ever so looking for a specific blade? Five minutes if you want to come up to that area. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Tago nuts. I gotta ask him about that. What's up with the nuts? Individual cutters for 45s and 55s? Some bullnose planes. What about West Virginia? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot in West Virginia. Definitely look in the map. It's down in the description below. What do I never? Number seven planes are harder to find than number eights. Uh, because at that size, uh, if you're, once you're getting that big, if you're going to spend a couple more bucks to get a number eight. And number eight will do everything a number seven will. Just a little heavier and a little bigger. Um, so number sevens just were not as common. 
Um, same thing as sixes. Uh, traditionally, sixes just aren't that common. They're kind of an in-between size. That is, you know, if you need a jointer, get a jointer. If you need something smaller, you get a number five, which is much cheaper. Um, so sixes and sevens are a little bit harder to find. Let's see what we got over here. Brass braces. Another infill. Yeah, check out this sucker. Bainley Tool Company. That is cool. Matching notches out of the back. <laughs> What is an infill plane? Oh, let's do a little demonstration here. We still have plenty of room. This is an infill plane. Come watch this demonstration. Uh, it's got steel sides, a steel bottom, and they infill the middle with wood here and here. So the iron is actually sitting on a block of wood. Feels really good in hand, but incredibly expensive, hard to make. Um, and so you'll still see it with, uh, like there's a shoulder plane. So just about any type of plane you can get as an infill. Is there anyone that looks under 40 at the show? I'll, not, well, it used to be that no, you'd never find anyone under 60 here, but now they're starting to change. Um, so you get a lot more people my age starting to look at this. Here's another 55 with all the stuff. 45. Collection of saws, some ads. I'm still having a hard time. I want to find a bowl ads like this, but not in that bad of shape. That one's got some issues. Um, that is high on my list. I just haven't been able to find one. I'm probably going to go to Black Bear Forge and have him forge one for me. Let's see. Oh, you were looking at router planes. Here, let me show you what we got here. Got uh, all these minis, a couple regulars. I bought one of these minis. Uh, I bought one that had a, a side post. Oh, I didn't see that one. I should have looked at that. That's kind of cool. How much for the 55? Uh, that 55 that was over there was, uh, uh, I think he had 250 bucks on it. That was a box and everything. There's a guy over here that had a 55. All the parts, all the cutters, no box. He had 80 bucks on it. And if it's still there when I go back, I'm going to go back and grab it. So 80 bucks for a 55 with everything. Woohoo! Um, shoulder planes, some Lee Nielsen stuff. Sure, what's uh, yeah, the minis you have to kind of look around. Usually, those are in like a box of other junk, they, they don't normally have a display like that, and not as many people want them. Some interesting sure. marking gauges. We, we, we enjoy putting on demonstrations and have done this for many years, but this is a skip a line? Last time we did it, uh, uh, I skipped a we'll line, didn't it. I? But, uh, anyway, we like to educate people. No, I didn't. Check out this anvil. Resurfaced, 450 bucks. Here's an old train wrench. <laughs> Beast of sucker. When you want to take the hub off of a train. 45s, 45s, block planes. There's another dowling jig, but missing the bits. Box of 75s. Set of three for 75 bucks. Oh no, excuse me, a 190 and 191 and 192. All for 75 bucks. How about 60 for this then? We'll go around all this. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to show you some of the... Scene number 10, Carriage Maker Rabbit Planes. Uh, yeah, actually, I think that there was one... I think there's one over on the other table we might be coming to. I, I, I know I've seen at least one. Wouldn't surprise me if there's two or three of those uh, number 10s here. 
Yeah, four hook rope maker. Kind of cool. Beautiful slide. Anyway, we, the corn should be cooked. And it I find out that you. And, uh, yeah, the uh, the one in Germany. I had someone there send me those two posts. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on those. I've been told that they are both great places to buy tools, so I'd love to hear that. Uh, yeah, I haven't found anything like this in France yet, but if you know of any antique store or anything like that, I'd love to put that on the map. Uh, France is kind of an empty spot so far. Uh, I don't think I've seen a Clifton plane yet. But I probably overlooked them. Uh, seeing if any of those, nope. Uh, Belgium, I don't think there's anything on the map yet in Belgium, but if you know of anything, let me know. I'll put it on there. Um, I just haven't had as much, well, I haven't been in Europe as much to search. And I'd like to find out more. I've gotten quite a bit in the UK. I've gotten several locations in Germany. I think there's one in Spain, one in Italy. Um, and I'd like to have more like that. And every now and then there is an international Midwest tool collectors meet. Um, most of the time just need someone over there to host it. Big old lock. When you really want to impress. <laughs> there's a nice Stanley 55. Let's see what the price is on that one. That is cool. Can you buy that big framing slick for me? Which big, oh, this one here? Yeah, that's a pretty one. I'm hoping I'm gonna, I might actually buy a framing slick here in a little bit. Um, it's on my list. More block planes. Or not black planes, uh, holding planes. Gouges, pattern maker gouges, files, rasps. Oh, actually, these are floats. Really nice floats. Yeah, I don't buy things for other people anymore unless you happen to be a member who are not here. And if you contact me ahead of time, then I'll, I'll work with you. Um, but I don't actually buy things for people who are not members because, well, you got to be a member to buy things. No, there's not going to be a Skyatook this year. Uh, there was not enough drive to run one again. There might be one in the future, and we're thinking about doing something similar, but uh, not right now. Yeah, uh, here's a. There's a pretty one. Like to play with that sometime here. Number 85, scraper, rabbit scraper. <laughs> yeah, here's another infill with a beach infill. So metal sides, wooden infill on the body. Levels, saws, uh, nib. <laughs> Demonstrating apple peeling and slicing with antique tools. <laughs> okay, here's some fun stuff. Five dollars each in each of those buckets. Saw sets. Dave hasn't done this a lot of times, so give him a little. No, you can. Oh. <laughs> Old compass plane that's been really worn down. You're all welcome to come up and get a slice of that. Yeah, here's uh, it's, it's uh, tendon bad. makers mm -hmm. for uh, Windsor chairs. I want to get a set of those sometime. Blades. Choose your blade. More books with more information. 
81 cabinet scraper. Number 80 cabinet scraper. There's actually quite a few scrapers here today. A lot of uh, these are actually for uh, measuring board feet, so you can see how long it is, how wide it is, by how long it is, and it'll tell you it's this many board feet on this piece. Shoulder planes. Plow plane. Yeah, I want to do a video um, doing those uh, tenoning uh, augers. I just haven't, I don't have any yet to, to do it on. They're a lot of fun to play with though. And I uh, got the chance to play with some Windsor chairs. That was enjoyable. Man, a little bit of everything. Oil cans. Yeah, yeah. Here's an old uh, lathe. Check out that beast. Uh, what's the 48? What are 48 selling for? Uh, they have gone up in price a bit, uh, but I got mine yesterday for 40. No, it was thirty-eight dollars. Actually, we got a pretty good price on that one. Um, so they're relatively good price, but they're they're more expensive than they used to be. A lot of people have been buying them recently. There's some gorgeous old egg beaters. Check out the basket on that. Iron sets. Pros. Hatchets. What do you think that was More wooden planes? Still looking for a good spill plane. I want to make a few of those. I want to have a few of those, but I uh, haven't gotten yet. Bunch of compass planes. There have been a lot of, a lot of compass planes today. Now here's a number two. It's a good late model Stanley. Good for user. Let's see what we got over here. Some things underneath the table. Oh uh, yeah, here you go. Here's a dowel maker. A couple slicks. Oh, these are all the auction items. That'll be up tonight. I didn't realize that. So these are all the things that will be auctioned off later tonight. Oh, there's a grinder for you. Check out that beast. High speed. All right, let's come back over here. Hey, no one's bought this set yet. Some levels around these people. Check out those crown molding planes. Transitional planes. There's a couple number twos for you. Stanley 45 in the box. Wow, that's actually really nice. I don't think those cutters have been opened yet. 55. Bench mounted drill press. Yeah, I think it is out of time. I'm not going to do that. I've never had that. Oh, yeah. That's right. You were looking for a Type 11. Uh, no, it's not a Type 11. That's a... Actually, I'd have to look at... No, that's older. That's uh, newer than that. Now, I want to get one of these uh, fences, a joiner's fence, and show this off. You actually uh, can mount this to the side of a number seven, number eight, and make sure that it stays flat um, to the, uh, the, the board, uh, keeping it 90 degrees to the board. But those have recently gone up in price because there's a lot of beginners who are like, ooh, I need one of these for joining a board. You don't need one of those, they just make it fun. Um, but a lot of people really like those. I think I saw a number eight over there. Hey guys! Hi, Daddy. Hi guys are here for doing this. 
I just got to finish up this row of tables and I'll be done with the video. So here's some number 45s. Don't touch, guys. Yeah, here's a number one. Quite a few number ones here today. Yeah, there's, there's actually, uh, there are quite a few people here around my age this year. Uh, when I say quite a few people, there's probably like a dozen or so. No, don't touch. Um, so it's a lot longer, younger than it usually is. Back up, Arthur, back up. Measures. Another Stanley 81. Needs a bit of cleanup, but uh, hey, 30 bucks. Ooh. Ooh. For an 81. Okay, I might be back for that. I love you. 81 for 30 bucks. I love you too, bud. You want to buy some things today? Yes. Okay, we'll see. Now, this is for uh, the tops of barrels. So you can actually plane off the, the top of the barrel. Sweet. Dowel maker. Don't touch, JJ. Back up. Come on over here. Squares. Out over here. Some screwdrivers. Actually, uh, there are a couple teenagers here who are buying their first hand tools. So yeah, there are, there are a few. Uh, there'll be more tomorrow. Be, the, the youngest group comes tomorrow. The people who have to work Thursday and Friday come Saturday. And then Saturday's a little cheaper because you can buy the Saturday only pass. Don't touch, JJ. Back up, bud. Almost to the end here. Some marking gauges. An interesting collection to pick through. Ooh, there's a nice compass. That is the early style with the knob on the side. A pain to use, but fun. Three dollars each. Anything in the box. Pliers and saw sets and screwdrivers. Number eight. A little bit of everything here. So, yeah, that's about it for the live walkthrough. Um, so, yes, this is a ton of fun. And uh, if you ever get the chance to come to one of these, do so. They are so worth it. I mean, this isn't this isn't like a, a, a swap meet. This isn't the place where you come to to uh, you know just buy things. Um, everyone here shares the price, of it, so that's why everyone has to pay to get in the door. And it's a club, and there's so much more information here than just the tools. We have uh, talks where we can talk through the history of tools and how they came out. Um, and then at the next one in the spring, I'm actually going to be doing a demonstration. And I'm thinking about doing a demonstration on the, um, the way dovetails have changed. And actually do uh, using Egyptian tools and German, uh, 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 Roman tools and taking it through the ages and actually showing a dovetail creation through the age. So that should be a lot of fun. But, uh, let me look through and see if there's any last minute questions, but we'll probably wrap this up here in a minute. I just have to turn around. Say hi, JJ. Want to find me a good number two? Looks like they have more there than the little last Lansing show. Um, this is, yeah, this one's larger than the Lansing. Um, they've, they've been steadily getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, so yeah, um, definitely they're worth the drive. There are, I mean, there are people here from all over the United States, California, Pennsylvania, uh, Florida. I've been talking to people all over. It's, it is worth the drive to come out and spend three days, enjoy hand tools, not just to buy tools, but to learn about them, to get to know other people. Anytime you're looking for something special, you can find someone who collects that something special. So there's a lot of good information here. So I think that's about it. I'm going to take my kids around and let them buy something. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Stop.